everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're gonna build this little photo uh, photo play matchbook, which uh, you wind up making a, a four by six matchbook folio that's got six pockets inside of it. So I'm gonna build this with you guys. So I'm taking it from the package and we're gonna build it up together. When you open the package, there is um, a sleeve that gives you the directions. And I'm gonna go over those. So step one, using a circle punch, cut a half circle along the center top edge of each panel. Okay, so I think that the way these are gonna work is they're going to, um, you're gonna pull from the top out, or I guess it could be from the side out. So these cards, I'm not, it's hard to know if you can see the white on white, are pre-scored here and here and here. So this is going to turn into a pocket. Now I'm not gonna follow their directions on the punch because I'm gonna build my pocket first and then I'm gonna punch it in the closed position so that the, the, um, the uh, half circles um, meet completely. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and there's six of these, is um, I'm going to trim out. It shows you where to cut away the corner here and it shows you where to cut that away. So I'm gonna do that first. And I'm cutting exactly on the lines just because I want to give you feedback if it's going to be slightly off. And it looks like it is. So you're going to have to probably make some slight adjustments to the lines and use them more as guides rather than rules. Yeah, I can see that the score corner is slightly off from this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct it as you should. See where my cut is versus the line? There we go. All right, and then I need to do a little bit here. Looks good, okay. So I've got those bits um, trimmed out. So what it shows is that, it's actually the way it is on the paper, is we need to fold these score lines. Do not fold this. So you want us to fold this. This is very heavy cardstock. It feels like 110, um, which is nice. It feels good. And then we're gonna fold this one. Okay. And you can use glue or tape. I'm gonna use tape. Okay, I'm gonna add my adhesive. And it looks like these are half inch score lines, so your 3 8 inch tape should work beautifully. You can use glue if you want, if you'd rather. Okay, and then we're gonna do this. Now it says to close these two pieces. So we're going to fold this over. And I can see that it's not lining up perfectly. So it might be a good idea to um, fold your score lines first before you apply your tape. So if you need to adjust the location of the tape, you can. Because they're not lining up perfectly, what I'm gonna do is remove my tape backing and um, add a bead of glue that'll allow me to slide it into place. And then once I do that, I am going to lay it down, slide it into place. Sorry, I had a little extra, extra tape here. Slide it into place and then I may rescore it um, so that this edge comes flush with the score line. And that is just me uh, being particular. I don't know if anybody else is gonna bother with that, but that's me. I That would bother me <laughs> to see that the um, 
two edges didn't line up. Okay, and just really enough to keep to slide it around. So if you follow the score lines, you can see that there is a gap. So I am going to take advantage of the fact that I've got glue on there. I'm gonna line my edges up. I'm gonna hold it in place, and once it gets a good hold, then I'm gonna come back and recrease this side. And then we'll be we should be flush. Let's see, where is my there. That's pretty good. It's still a little bit off, but it's it's much straighter than it was. Okay, yeah. So there's our first pocket. So we're gonna do this um, five more times. And then the last piece is we're gonna fold this, well, two things. We're gonna fold this up, and I'm not sure. So when we fold it, okay. So the way that they had us constructed, I'll go over the steps with you. I was trying to decide which way to fold, score this. So here's the, This was this, this side is here. So this side is this. It wanted us to fold this over, which I did. And now the last piece is to fold this up. And so the difference would be folding this up here or coming around the other side. And so you can see there's a score line here and a score line here versus this where there would be a single score line. So for the time being, I'm gonna follow their directions and then uh, see how this works out and then add my tape uh, later because if I decide to flip it um, the tape would go here versus here so I want to see how this goes in the booklet first before I add my tape and then the last piece is to cut the um, half circle punch which I'm gonna hold off on because I don't have my punch out okay so this time I before I do any of my trimming I'm going to um, I'm gonna fold everything and see how it's lining up. Yeah, there's a gap here too. So I'm gonna go ahead, we need to score this, uh, flatten this, burnish it, sorry. I was a lost for my words. And then I want it to come all the way across. So before I add any of my tape, I think I'm gonna try to straighten this out best I can. Then I'll come back and cut my corners, my edges, and add my tape. So it's a little bit of a challenge to hold it in place when you're trying to rescore it. There we go, that side's good. And I'm just doing brute force really to hold it. shifting it might actually be better to adhere it and then try to straighten it so that's what I'm gonna do it's a very wide score line so I think depending on you know which side of that score could really make a difference I'm actually gonna fold it the other way and see what it, if it comes together better and it does uh, no it doesn't it's about the same okay so I'm gonna straighten that out after I glue down this, this edge. So that means I'm gonna do my trimming. Okay. 
there's one more. Here it is. I like to fold it because then you don't over trim it. You just rest on the corner and trim away. If it's not folded, it's easy to over trim. So even though I am not going to uh, put tape on it yet, I just wanted to fold it so I could get my trim where it belongs. Now I'm going to fold it over this way. First I'm going to burnish it and um, add some glue so I can straighten it out. So it's not a big deal. You can put it together just based on where it's at. I just think uh, all these little details make it look more professional, a little neater. Um, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of structure. <laughs> to go straight. I'm going to line my edges up and hold it into place. We'll make sure that's adhered good and tight. Once it is, then we'll use our bone folder to come uh, across from the seam over to the score. And you can see it's kind of not, you can see it's not straight, so we're going to straighten that out with um, our bone folder. There we go. That's nice and beautiful. Super easy. And then this is the last piece, at least until we decide how they're all going to go in the book. Okay, I'm going to do three more of those, but I think you guys get the gist when I come back. Um, I think I want to decorate these before I put them in the book, but I'm not sure because I haven't built one yet. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these. When I come back, I'll have all six done. Okay, I've got all six of these ready. Now, according to the instructions, we're to put tape on um, this flange for five out of the six. The top one is not going to have anything on it. So we're supposed to attach these one to the other like so. Okay. So the front of this one goes to the back of that one. I'm going to do that five times. <clears throat> and then basically they're going to fan out when we're done. So I'm going to try to line them up side to side as best I can before I press them into place. Okay. Oh, looks pretty good. This is nice paper. Oops, that one's way off. I need to lower that, so I'm going to lift it and lower it. Probably should stand it up to do it so that all the bases are the same. It's super, super smooth paper. You can see I didn't even mar it when I lifted it. It's pretty nice. So I'm going to hold one corner. There, I like that better. So I'll do the next three that way. see how they fan out okay so there's our top one so here's the cover so there are two score lines 
here and two here, so it's going to fold over like this, a matchbook. This is going to be the base, and we've got adhesive here. So this is where we are in the instructions. So it says to adhere the stack pockets to the center panel and press firmly. Yep, so this tab, or uh, adhesive-free tab, is going to be on the top. We're going to place this down like so. Okay, so this is going to be adhered to this. You can use glue or tape. I'm using tape. Part, part of the reason is because it's not as messy, and the other reason, and mess matters when you're working with white, and the other reason is um, if, I, if I make a mistake, I can undo it and start over, and since I hadn't built one of these before, I wanted to err on the side of caution. So I am going to bend it up and then press it into place because I want to make sure that that hinge is going to work like I expect it to. Oh, that's interesting. So let me share with you <laughs> what I just discovered is that I put the tape all the way to the top and if you have a notch, you're not going to need that. So I'm going to lift that tape. Let's see, how did I do? Looks pretty good. So I'm going to take an X-Acto knife Actually, and um, actually, it's just a box cutter. Sort of cut around that circle, and then peel back that tape. And now that I know what I'm doing, I would also put my background down before I added my I mean my designer paper right here. So just a, a light score with your blade is probably all you need to get the uh, tape to roll off. And again, this paper is super smooth, so I'm not having any trouble removing the tape without undo, which is nice. I just got a little bit left. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to apply adhesive here and close the book. And I'm going to use glue here. And that way I can slide it around a little bit when I close the... Do I have that right? Yeah. No. Oh. Nope. I've got this in upside down. <laughs> This whole thing's in upside down. <sighs> hey everyone, it's Daphne. I'm going to start working on getting the uh, designer pieces uh, ready for our um, project here with Photoplay. And um, the back side of the cover of Joy of Life is all this fussy cutting, which I'm starting. So I'm going to fussy cut these elements out offline and I'll be back shortly. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate. So <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm glad I taped things down because I made a mistake. I actually put this whole stack in the other way around. So while I was offline, I undid my pack. Fortunately, the only thing that it was attached to was here and rotated it around. So the, the punched side goes to the long flap and the hinge side goes to the short flap. So now I'm gonna add, this is all back in and everything's fine. I'm gonna add glue to this strip and, um, and I was looking right at it, the instructions, and I just put it in wrong. So we are going to now glue this on top like so. And we just want to do that hinge because this flap is going to keep this secure, like a matchbook. Okay, so I'm going to open it up and make sure that I'm getting good adhe adhesion all the way across. Okay, yay, now we're ready to decorate. So the other thing I did while I was away was look at all these goodies. All these came from that single cut apart sheet. So, yay, now, get my glue on, uh, cap on. So what I'm planning to do at first is cover the fronts of each of the, well, let's go ahead and decorate the outside first. Yeah, let's do that. 
um, cause I want the prettiest paper on the outside. So, um, when I opened my pack, I took my frame paper and I cut out each of my frames and there's two of each in a pack. So I've got that. So I am going to use these to decorate on the inside, but I'm also going to use them on the outside. And the outside is also where I'm going to put, um, a, a fair amount of, um, these fussy cut elements because I don't have to worry about them bumping into anything. So I need a base page to go on the back. So let me open my pack again. And I want this to be a background because I'm likely going to use one of these framed elements um, as uh, a feature on the page. So I want to pick something kind of simple. Maybe not that simple. That's a nice page. That's pretty nice. Have to be careful because if you have too much pattern, it's going to be hard to lay something on top of it. <clears throat> but I do like that pattern. That works. So that's one that I like. No. Maybe. I like that better. I like that. Okay. So, which one do I like better? I think I like this, it stands out better. I may cut my frames down, I still haven't decided. Okay, so I think this is gonna be my cover. Although I haven't gone through the rest of my pack. That's really pretty. Yeah, okay. I, I really like this, but I think that the um, the scale is too large. So I'm gonna go with this one where the flowers are a little bit smaller and we are going to create uh, the cover. So let's see what we need to do from a size perspective. Get my ruler. Okay. I'm gonna start with a 16th inch border, but I think I'm gonna go bolder because I think a nice bold border is um, gonna look really good. So I'm gonna start with three and seven eighths and then I may make it thinner, uh, narrower. We will take a look at it. Okay. Three and seven eighths. Actually, I like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I, I think I'm going to do a contrast down here. So I want this to basically be just the, the um, I'm going to do a strip here. Or do I want to do the whole thing? Oh, look, looky there. Um, so that whole thing winds up being 12 inches. But we're going to need to cut it. Otherwise, um, the front will be right side up and the back will be upside down. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start at the back, then do the spine, and then do the cover. And it will be... Will it be? No, it won't. <clears throat> yep, change my mind. I'm going to start at the front, then the spine. And I'm just going to use my pencil to help me out here. Wherever it is. Here it is. Okay, 
And I think that's a half inch. So three eighths is what it would be. Three eighths. <clears throat> That was too small. Hmm. Or is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, it must not be three eighths. Oh, I did two eighths. That's a quarter inch. That's why. Okay. Well, I might. Let's make sure we have enough to cut the back and then we'll see what's left. Okay, so there's the back. And I'm going to mark it. We might have to do um, a contrast on the top and bottom because I didn't measure right. But it might be, it might work. We'll see. We shall see. Okay. So there's the back. We've got the front. And then I had this. And I think that's going to work for us. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be good. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this down. I am not inking the edge because it's white on white. Um, so it's not going to stand out like white does against black. So it'll be fine. I also kind of avoid um, ink when I'm doing anything in with a white base because invariably you're going to get a fingerprint somewhere in your project. Okay. go. Let's get our strip in. Oh, look, that just turned out perfect. Okay. And this goes this way. Correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm uh, orienting my paper so that this is a vertical matchbook. If you wanted, you could change it to horizontal, but I'm doing vertical. So there's our cover on our back. Isn't that pretty? Now I think I want to do a contrast here. So let's go back and look at our prints. So we have this pink, and then we have this, which I don't know if it's enough contrast. I don't think it is. So, so far I'm leaning toward the pink, and then we also have the gold. So I think need to make a decision about what's going on top because if I'm using this, I don't think I want to use the same pattern below. I think I'd want to go to, to um, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm going to use my pink. Oh, that's what's on the back side of this. No, I don't want to use that. And then that's more of my frame. So I think I'm going to use the pink. And I am going to have my cable go up and down. So I'm going to measure from this edge to this edge. And then I'll trim it to fit. So it's one and three quarters. This paper is really nice. It's very thick. That's one. 
It doesn't seem wide enough, but it is. And then uh, three and seven eighths. So yeah, I like that. Pretty pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to use, uh, mark my um, trim here. I'm going to use a straight edge to cut that. to do a project without ink every once in a while. It feels like it goes so much faster. But I do think it makes a big difference on those dark backgrounds. Worth the effort. to take a sliver off of this. Not much. crooked. Let's see how bad it is. Oh, really bad. It shifted. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to cut it off this one <laughs> where the ruler will have more to grip onto. What did, what did I say this was? It's a half inch. <clears throat> it does. This is a really cool project. I'm liking it. Aside from putting my, po my um, pocket pages in upside down, um, it's going together really quick. This would be a great, fast brag book. I don't think I got enough glue in there. That should do it. There we go. So I think the way that I'm, suppo I'm supposed to glue all of this down, so that's not clear on the instructions. Let me pull them back out. Here they are, okay. So on the instructions it says, apply adhesive to the underneath of the top tab and press firmly. So that's the top tab, um, and I did that, but um, this is not secure enough to hold it closed. So, I'm not sure how that's supposed to work. 
So what I'm going to do, <laughs> which it doesn't call for this, but I mean, it needs to stay closed. So we either need to add um, a magnet or a fastener, or we glue this top tab also down here. And then, um, and then this will stay snug to the top and you just lift it slightly. And I'm going to try that. So I put glue on the flip side of that tab and I glued it to this. Now I'm going to put glue on this side and glue it down to the pocket page. Mm, I'm not. I'm going to do tape in case I don't like it. We can undo it. And, um, and then I'm going to see if this will stay in place uh, enough to hold the, that closed. So I'm just adding it to that half inch tab on the last pocket on the back side. Hopefully that's clear. So to me, the instructions are a little bit vague here. I don't know if they've got a video for it. Um, but I think together we're gonna figure it out right now. And then you'll know um, if you buy one. Yeah, I think that's, that's the idea is that, yeah, you adhere part of that down and then you tuck this in and it will stay closed. So, so that's, that's the solution. I use tape, you can use tape or glue. And then you still can flip through each of the pockets. It's just that the very last one is fixed to the back and now the very first one is fixed to the front. But only do halfway because you need to, this tab needs to go in. So what I did is there's adhesive now on both sides of this tab, one holding it down to this pocket and one holding it down to this, this flap. Okay, there we go. So far, look at that in just a few minutes, how cute that is. It's stinking cute, I'm loving this paper. Okay, now I need a few minutes to get together um, my insides. And then once I've got all my bases covered, then we can work with some embellishing some of it. But I wanna make sure that I'm cutting through uh, for the big pieces early on um, and not accidentally cutting through it um, before I've got, you know, my six pockets covered. Now these pockets are four by six, um, so in theory, you should be able to get six off of a 12 by 12. Um, so we, we have plenty of paper, um, and you're go I'm gonna wanna cover both the front and back. So just something to think about. I'll be back shortly. Okay, everyone, I went through and I decided that I am gonna do every other page with the yellow and the green, and I've kind of laid out what my plan is. So, as I had showed you earlier, I had cut out each of these um, frames from the 12 by 12. Actually, here's one that's kind of a partial. I cut these all out. Some of them, I've gone ahead and fussy cut the element, and then some of them, I cut out the frame. So here's the frame here, here, here and here, and I'll probably put one there, I'm not sure. Um, and I've got, the way I've got it sorted is, I've got two of this style, two of the pinks, and I, and I wanna have two of the whites. And here it is. So this will go in here too. I may switch it for, no, both of them have green, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Uh, I can probably switch this frame, there we go, because um, I don't wanna have a green background on a green card. And then, and then I'm pretty happy with the rest of them, I think. I think that looks nice. So this is um, a combination of these cards, um, the frames, sometimes I fussy cut, in fact, this is fussy cut from one of them, the, the flip side, and uh, some of these are awkward elements that came from the cut apart page. This is an element that came from the cut apart page. So are the balloons, the birds are, um, all of the birds that I'm gonna be using, these flowers. So this came from actually one of the cards. Um, it was on one of these cards and I fussy cut it out. This was from the cut apart sheet. So basically I kind of used a blend of those two things. So the idea is we have our four by six um, background each one of these will have a frame, and I've decided to go with two of each frame style. So there's two of the pink, two of the carved, and then two of the simple. And then you've got a blend of cut aparts from these cards and from the 12 by 12 cut apart sheet. So what I'm looking for is 
uh, three to five elements per card. So here I've got the frame, that's one, two, three, four elements. This one I'm going with three. I've got this uh, floral spray, um, the frame, and a bird. Over here I've got a floral spray, the chair, umbrella, and a frame. Here I've got two pieces, which is a floral spray and a bird. Here, a frame, a bird, and the balloon. And that's what I'm gonna start with. So that, that's what I've got laid out for now. So we're going to pull the book back in, and basically I'm going to cover every other one of these. Um, so I'll go blue, and then I'll go yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. And whatever I do on the front, I'm gonna do on the back. So I'm gonna start that way, and I'm just gonna slide that off. And this, the front one, because I glued this down here, needs to be a little bit shorter than the rest. So I'm just gonna mark that and trim it. The rest um, will, should fit as is, as trimmed. So I'll mark it, trim it, and then each of these still needs a notch, which I forgot about. Okay, let's see how we did. If that's gonna work, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, now it's, I'm gonna hold it here centered. And I forgot, each one of these pockets has an insert. I'm gonna take those out. And then um, while I'm holding this in place, I am going to draw a circle here and that'll be my guide for using my punch. So I did a one and, I think I did a one and a quarter punch. Let's check. I have two punches out, so I'm not sure anymore. Yeah. So I'm gonna start with a punch. That just makes it perfect. And then I'm gonna actually see that was one and a quarter, this one's one and a half. I'm gonna see if I like this better where I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger so that you'll have a white frame around it. Takes a little bit of a steady hand. Yeah, see that looks like too much white. I'm gonna try it because I have enough to recover if I decide I don't like it. So basically what it means is I'll have like oh, an eighth inch border up here and a sixteenth inch border to the left and right. Let's see, what do you guys think? See, I think it's too big. I think I'd rather have it match perfectly. Um, in which case you can just hold it in place and I think slip the punch over it and punch it in place. We'll see if I can get it over all three pieces. Yep. Takes a bit of a steady hand, but there you go. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make it flush. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna do every other one green, yellow, okay? I'm gonna glue these down and I'll be back once I get these all in place. Okay, everyone, I've got, I've got my front and back covered all the way through. And like I said, I was just alternating these patterns and this stops here. It looks like I need to get a little more glue here and finish it. Okay, now we're gonna start decorating. I'm not sure I'm gonna decorate the first cover. And I'm only gonna decorate one side. So I have to reshuffle my, my bits and pieces. Let's do this one, yeah. So I had forgotten about this notch, so I'm gonna to have to adjust kind of what I was thinking of a little bit. And I don't want too much volume here because in the at the end, I want this to close. Now, if I was doing a card, I would do volume here, but I'm not, so I'm gonna keep it simple. And 
And by simple, I mean flush. I'm actually going to, I think, trim part of the balloon off. That looks a little too forced. There we go. I like it. A little, little more off center. This was fussy cut from the cover, back of the cover. one other element I had. I think it was a bird. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm not so crazy about it. So I think, these are my inserts. I think I'm going to use just a couple of flowers here. And I had some pre-cut, yeah. I'll put a couple of pink flowers here. Just to add a little bit more interest. It's a little too much glue. Okay, so there is the first one. Let's see, we used a pink. Get my frames back in order. So I can use either one of these. And I think I'll use this. Okay. So I really like that. I think it looks really pretty. And then maybe a bird. You could use the same uh, formula just to make, you know, a whole bunch of cards. Because this is basically the size of a card. too big for this. The scale's not quite right. Okay, so I got three elements on this one. Hey? Hello? What's up? Hi! Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Okay, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. 
Hey guys, it's it's me. Sorry about that. I got a phone call from my sister who's not been feeling well and I just wanted to make sure she was okay. She's also without a car. So um, I just want to make sure she was all right. Uh, and I caught part of my conversation on, on the video. Anyways, we are on. So there was the flower spray. We've got our little birdhouse. And then here I'm going to use this picture frame. I fussy cut this chair. I'm loving the hat up here. So, so far that's what I'm doing. And then I think I'm gonna work in uh, the umbrella. At the moment, I don't have any glue on the frame because I'm trying to decide where I want it. Okay, I think I like this. There you go. You can see lots of color in the frame. It's not for me. It's actually um, sort of distressed looking from, it comes out of the pack that way. Oh yeah, look at that. Doesn't that look, don't you just want to sit down there? I do. Okay, so there's three elements. And then here's this umbrella, which I think I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna tuck it behind, if I can get behind. Maybe that's too much. I think it's too much with this background, so that goes. Let's see if there's something else we can put here. Push this into place a little bit more. This record player is the one thing that just doesn't seem to go with anything else. It's a neat idea, but I just don't see how it works. What do you guys think? Something, something, huh? No, well, hmm, hmm. I might want to use that someplace else. Trash. Should have put the balloon behind the frame. That would have been cool. I can do that on another one. Okay. So I think I'm gonna leave it with these three elements. And then if I've got more goodies left over at the end, I might come back and uh, add them. Two, three. Okay. It's time to pause for a second. Okay, sorry, I'm playing phone tag with my sister back and forth. Okay, so here's our last one. I'm gonna do the bike. Sorry, it wants to keep flipping up on me. The frame, the bike, and what else? I thought I had a fence somewhere. Here it is. Maybe I'll add that to frame, fence, the bike and the balloons. You might also want to consider decorating these before you put them in the book. That would be an option. Okay, I like it. So let's get the frame in first. And then we'll put our fence in. The bicycle. Balloons. And there's like a little um, latch here on the back here and I'm gonna make it look like they're fastened to that. And I want them half on the frame, half off. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Hmm. Why not? Lovely. I think this is my favorite. <laughs> Okay, and then here's our last one. And I think we're back to peach. Pink. This. So this one is gonna be this beautiful cut apart. And let me see if I like that better. Nope. I'm just struggling with this much color against this, so that's why I'm flip-flopping a little bit. So this is the same frame with a pink background. I think I like it better, so I'm gonna cut, cut this down. Better. So that's what we're going to use, the pink background. my bits real quick but I think that's gonna be it and we're gonna call that done I like it like that I don't think I want to add anything else maybe some flowers but they have to be the right color and that looks a little dull doesn't it yeah, they would need to be pink, I think. Okay, I think that's it. That's all the bits I've got cut out at the moment. So, let's look at that. I'm trying to imagine that fussy cut out. Mm, I don't know. Not, not crazy about it. Needs a little something. Not sure what. Um, it's not a bird. It's got to be something else. So, I will dig around and I'll probably further embellish that a little bit. I still have to decide what I want to do here. So, I'll be back shortly. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I'm going to share with you this little project that I just put together using Photo Plays uh, Matchbook. And um, I really enjoyed this project. It was a lot of fun to put together. It's a very quick project. Um, if you need to do something in a pinch, I think it's the perfect size for a brag book. This is the matchbook that I started with. It's this super bright white. Inside are four pockets, and um, it, like I said, it went together super quick and I love it. This is from my stash. I just had to add this little wooden 
embellishment here. This is uh, fussy cut from the cover page, and this I'm f the project features Mente Joy of Life. Okay, you open it up, and inside are six pockets, four by six pockets, and there's an insert in each one of them. So there's a, a room for a photo um, or some journaling in each one of the, the pocket pages. And so I kept the, the front simple because of the closure. I didn't want to have it something on here that you're constantly scraping against. And then here I fussy cut elements from the 12 by 12 collection as well as um, the back side of the cover. Um, the back side of the cover is full of cut aparts. Um, and so it I used you know three to five elements per page to come up with these layouts. So I still have several pages left over. So essentially um, one pack is enough to do two of these little brag books. And I just think they're adorable. Look at that. So the finished product is four by six and it's what's called a matchbook. And again, uh, this is from a photo play and we have these in stock right now. They come in white only. And then the paper is Minte and the collection is Joy of Life. I hope you guys enjoyed.